Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Rhinoceros Funk, and you're in tuned to SoloWiseMusic.com, where the best is happening right here. Click on it. For the people who are not familiar with you, tell them who you are and what inspired you to get involved in hip hop. Oh, welcome everybody. My name is Rhinoceros Funk of Pleasant Quality Music, Gorilla Grooves Radio, and overall AA meetings, where I hang out there with your uncle. Uh, hip hop, uh, well, always man, obviously, the, the uh, influence of being raised in New York City in the, in the early 80s, late 80s, uh, the era of, of radio tapes, uh, Stretch and Bob, and, you know, all the others led to, uh, you know, being, being a hoarder of, of, of the culture, man, and, yeah. you know, we're trying to listen to the new dopeness, the, you know, lyricists, and, and uh, when I got to college, it inspired me to fucking start my own radio show. So that's where the whole Gorilla Groove concept came exactly. from. Exactly. Well, initially it was like me and a couple of my boys, and it was called Full Stamp Radio because we were all fucking broke. <laughs> we were all broke, we were all welfare kids, and uh, we started a show called Full Stamp Radio. Uh, and um, you know, we all we graduated, I hung around, they broke out, so I took over the show and I called it Gorilla Groove Radio. Um, and I had that took like about 2005, and then uh, I came down, came back to the city, and then uh, you know got back into the culture with the auto lyrics, you know being being around Fred, being around TME Studios, and um, that's how we uh, kind of created this small niche into the underground scene in New York City. So originally, Gorilla Group before Gorilla Rules, the actual radio show that started two years. Yeah. Earlier, yeah. you had the auto lyrics. What inspired you to create the auto lyrics? It's been seven oh, years long. The auto lyrics was, was was basically an extension of my thirst for being heard. Yeah. I mean, like having your own radio show, having people. Even if I have, I have radio shows that were like from one thirty, or one in the morning to three o'clock in the morning, and I would get no phone calls. I ended up I ended up having like the drive time slot at one point. Yeah. From like five to seven. And getting tons of phone calls, and back then it was just spinning straight vinyl. This is at so, Albany. This is in Albany, yeah. yeah. So like you know, having that, having that outlet to kind of always push our music and being able to talk shit to people, as well as picking up phone calls and just being involved in, and, 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 and having that outlet once again. And when I came down to the city, I was like, yeah, I need to do that again. Uh, but you know, being not not being matriculated in, in the school and not having an outlet to some sort of. Um, some sort of a, a radio station. I said, you know what? Let's just start doing live shows. Gotcha. So then, um, um, my boy Danny Kodak from the Point had access to the Point. They had a stage. And I was like, yo, we should start doing it here. And then, um, you know, through uh, associates and you know, the, uh, Fred's ex-wife and hooked us up with Fred. Yep. And then you know, I knew Fred's history. And then that's how we started dealing with that. I mean, we, then we created the Auto Lyrics. And then, then a couple of years back, we're like, yo. I'm looking at him like, dude, we can do this, man. We can do this out of here. We can just pirate this shit out. Just make that shit into an ill show off the internet. Just fuck stations, man. And he's like, yo, man, I don't know. I don't know. So let's give it a try. And we did one show. <clears throat> and the rest is history. Be like, every, two, every, every Tuesday we're here. Yeah, so it's been Sick, going for like two years, snowing, right? snowing, 98 degrees. <laughs> we're here doing that shit because... He looks forward to Tuesdays. I look forward. My week, my week starts and ends on Tuesdays. Like yeah. I, we love doing this shit. We love the banter that we have going back and forth. We love bringing up people that either, you know, I mean, we we look up to, we've been influenced by, or um, just to bring them on to give them light. Yeah. You know, and, and that and that drives us both when 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 we're doing this. I think that also helps with the auto lyrics because you bring an underground talent that people are not familiar with yeah. and it showcases their skill set. Exactly. And that's what separates the auto lyrics from a lot of other things. It's, it's a showcase. Yes. We always said you don't want we don't want an open mic, man. Open mics are they're a dime a dozen. You can do an open mic anywhere. But you know, when you when you have a, a, an extensive history and a respect for a, for Lyricists, I'm not going to say culture anymore because now this culture has been hijacked by a bunch of fucking assholes. Um, but lyricists, uh, uh, beat proper beat makers, when you have that sort of respect for these people, 
you want to showcase talent. Yes. You know what I mean? Like when we started the auto lyrics, it was it was always about yo send me your music. I don't know what the fuck you sound like. Send me your music. If you trash, I'm sorry, I can't put you on my show. And that happened more than more than a dozen times, man. You gotta be like, yo, listen, man. I guess you're doing what you're doing, but you're not for this. You know what I mean? And there'd be sometimes some dude will send you a, a track, you're like, oh, I'm on the fence about it, and then you bring him on, and then he's doing some shit, you're like, oh, this fucking asshole. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna go into no names, obviously, but I'm like, yeah, you fucking asshole. I thought you were gonna do the, the shit that you sent me. It's like, nah, man, this, this is my club show. Like, this is not a club to you? This ain't a fucking club. It's an underground hip-hop underground show. hip-hop showcase, man. Do your underground hip-hop shit. But um, still, we, there's a ton of people that we're constantly dealing with on a monthly basis that are, that are putting out great shit on a weekly basis with the music, with, with the radio show. Um, but it's uh, it's been an honor, man. Yeah. A damn honor. Real honor. Yeah. I don't want to know what your thoughts about promoters trying to get artists to pay to oh. perform. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, I love my thoughts. Because I, I think those people are fucking savages. I mean, they, I think they're fucking predators, uh, to be honest with you. Um, people, people who... who have people pay, and I've been to these fucking shits because you know people will say, "Yo, Ryan will come out to my show. Or I'm performing. I gotta sell tickets." Yeah, you make the motherfucker sell the ticket. All you really do is book the fucking venue. You make the motherfucker sell the ticket, pay you, and then what are you really doing? But shit, and I've been to these joints, and these motherfuckers don't put a crowd for you. It's like you have to pull the crowd, sell the ticket, perform. I'm like, damn, if it's like that, bro, then get a boombox and do that shit on the street. Like, it's, it's disrespectful. Yeah. It's damn right disrespectful. And I know a lot of people do it. I'm not trying to disrespect you. If you take it that way, then take it that way. I disrespect you. I'm sorry. We'll have a beer about it and we'll cry later together. But people who charge other people, are it's, it's a predatory action. Who the fuck are you above the talent? If it is, even if it is talent. But who the fuck are, are you above the person who's performing, above the person who takes your time to write songs, create songs, make music, and all you're doing is saying, all right, I'm going to get this little space, but you're going to do all the work. And I'm just, it's, it's, it's exploitation. Yeah. And that's the problem with music. There's been exploitation in music since the beginning of, 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 of the music company. Everyone has been, been, been exploited. And that's a problem that exists not only behind the labels, but now in the streets as well. We've never done that. We've never charged a motherfucker a dollar. We, we've, we've paid artists if they're, if they're paid worthy. But we charge fucking, we were charging for a long time, $3 at the door. And then five, we're still charging $5. Some of these motherfuckers are charging $20 at the door to see a whole bunch of nobodies. That's a waste of money. It's a waste of money and it's a disrespectful not only to the artist, but to me as a fucking consumer of hip hop. Stop doing that shit. You're not that fucking important. So I take it that you're not a fan of pay payola with um the fuck out of here. The whole radio thing. Fuck out of here. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, my man, you know what that is? It's 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 a, it's a form of fucking prostitution. And do, do you believe it also devalues the art because what you're of doing? Of course, is- of course, because you're sucking dick for money. That's what you're doing. Whatever, whoever throws it your way, you're gonna play it. No matter how whack it no is. No matter how whack it is. So you know, if a dude comes at you with a fucking two-inch cock, you're gonna fucking <laughs> suck it because he gave you the money for it. You're gonna be like, oh, poppy, this cock is good. When in reality, it sucks. It's horrible, and it's disrespectful to the culture. Not to the culture again, but it's disrespectful. Mm-hmm. It's completely disrespectful. These dudes are getting their songs played on the radio, and and uh, 98% of the time, it's not even hip hop. It's some dude singing with auto tunes the whole time, the whole fucking time. Everyone playing the same shit on the radio. But I want to ask you, who were your musical influences growing up? Oh man, does not have to be hip hop? Because any genre of music. Oh well, I mean, I, I grew up in a fucking, I grew up in a Spanish household, man. Yeah. So um, there was a lot of Spanish ballads. Yeah. Spanish ballads from uh, uh, Brazilians. Um, the Brazilians do do creep into the Spanish folk disease because they're Portuguese, you know, Portuguese and shit. But um, people like Camilo Sesto from Spain. Um, Mexican singers, because it, it was all my mother was playing. Yeah. All her records and stuff, and that's what she was playing. But, you know, I mean, as, as we're very knowledgeable of, we know that Spanish ballads have been an endless, uh, 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 an endless uh, uh, pit for uh, talented producers to dig into. You know what I mean? We, we, we go Alchemist, fucking 
and you know, mad producers have, have dug into Spanish yes. ballads just because of the, either the horns, the strings, uh, the composition of it all. But um, that was a, a massive influence. And then, and then uh, hip hop in the early '80s, because my dad had a store in the Bronx. And then uh, um, by the time uh, uh, Boogie Down Productions came out in '86, it was all over the street. Yeah. And, when I heard Chris, I was like, holy shit, this dude is... is and he was sampling Spanish music. Well, he did a lot of James Brown, but then moved into, yeah. into Spanish music in the early, like early 90s, I believe. Yep. But um, Chris was 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 amazing. And still is. I still... Uh, you know, yesterday, I was blasting Return of the Boom Bap. And that's 23 years old. It came out in 93. It's 23 years old. And, that's, and, and, and it, can, it can stand up to any album today. Um, relevant to any album today. Sound of the Police, come on, man. We're dealing with that shit now still. And that hasn't changed. You know what I mean? It has not changed. And then timeless music like that, um, especially from Chris, my bad, you asked me about influence, but KRS One, um, obviously, uh, man, I mean, I, I can mention the oldies like Rock who, who was, uh, at the time he came out, was amazing with, uh, uh, with, with, with what he was saying and how he was saying it. Um, Chuck D, I was always drawn to a lot of the political. Uh, um, Kind of boisterous MCs, uh, the dudes who, who who can say a lot with with, with little words, but their voice meant. I mean, their voice stood a lot. Um, and then getting into that underground hip hop world, I still blast like I still blast Cage albums. I still blast LP albums just for for the for the uh, for the lyrical versatility and things of that nature, the creativity. Um, and then you know the the, the the, uh, the fine display of ignorance, like like he says, like, like Sean P. Um, there's a, an array a, an array of, of, of different influences, yes. Yes. Um, but everyone is, is is a strong lyricist in their own right. Uh, there's no one I can say from this kind of era or last ten years that, that can really uh, impress me. Written on the day of creation, there would be a need for salvation. Revelations came.